Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is in the fullness of time. Beloved family, our text says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from the slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Galatians 4, 1 to 7. King Jesus said to Nicodemus, when he was asked about being born again, thinking it was physical when Jesus meant a rebirth of the spirit. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So is it with everyone born of the spirit. John 3.8 We live in a physical world and operate in this realm of seeing, touching, and feeling. And so it is with time. It is something we cannot see, touch, or feel. We see it coming and going, but we don't know from or where it's going. But we all feel the effects of time. That's called aging. And, as usual, we try to take that which is unseen and make it visible or seen. We create watches or clocks to track time. It creates the illusion that we believe we can control time, but we cannot. And we use expressions like spending time, wasting time, saving time, need more time, and out of time. But this is an illusion because we do not possess time. He who created time is outside of time, and he alone by his will controls time. In Psalms 90, the psalmist records the prayer of Moses. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to the dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Psalms 91 to 4. Peter takes a verse from Moses' prayer and reminds the people, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. 2 Peter 3.8 A thousand years is like a day in the eyes of the Lord. Now because of the fall of man from authority and from everlasting life, no human has ever lived more than a day in the sight of the Lord. One person didn't quite make a day. Methuselah, the son of Enoch and the grandfather of Noah, lived to be 969 years old. Genesis 5.27 Elohim is from everlasting to everlasting. He is the Ancient of Days, the King of Glory. There was none before him, so he created the physical world and ordered the day and night, years and seasons, to frame the world with time. So what is meant by the fullness of time in our opening text? The Apostle Paul is revealing the kingdom concept to us in this verse. He says, we are heirs of the promise of God, but as a child does not have access to inheritance because of guardianship is granted until the appointed time by the father. He likens it to a slave having no access or no control. 
but depending on his master. Ah, oh, listen, when we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son. The fullness of time is not governed by the clock or watch. Rather, it is the fullness of a circumstance, dispensation, or events of time. King Jesus returned to earth not during the Egyptian, Babylonian, Medes, or Persian empires, but during the reign of the greatest empire on earth, the Roman Empire. Why? God sent him during this time because the Roman Empire was the model kingdom on earth of the kingdom of God in heaven. This was in the fullness of time for the creator of time. So family, we have to realize that our circumstance and situations are not outside of God's timing. Oh, he is outside of time. So when he steps into the situation, it is right on time. King Jesus, our Lord, returned during the perfect time to redeem us back to the King and grant us the inheritance of the children of the Most High God, El Elyon. Ephesians says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of the time he might gather together in one all things in christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him praise be to god that in the fullness of time he sent forth his son to return with the government on his shoulders as the king of all kings. He came back doing the most successful reign of the Roman kingdom to let them know that his kingdom is greater than theirs. Praise be to God, we belong to the kingdom if we follow and receive the king. We receive the king by becoming born again, by being cleansed by his blood, by doing those things that he whispered to Nicodemus late in the night. You should be born again in order to inherit the kingdom. But it's the kingdom we seek. What kingdom? The kingdom of God. For let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God mighty in battle. Much love.